administration. No, that's right. but, but less than 10. So it's within months of the other so, one. So here's the question for you then. I built the Voice of America. Uptimers got radios, but none of the downtimers got radios, right? Who's listening? I built the Voice of Luther up in Magdeburg. Who's listening to it? And with what? There's no radio. Okay. There's no radio. You listen very closely. Oh, uh, we're, we're going to, yeah. Go ahead. See that? A radio? That's a radio. That's a radio receiver. Okay? It's a coil of wire, a capacitor. This one's a fancy capacitor, I freely admit, with you know, fancy stuff. But, but the one that I use at home in order to make a capacitor, a variable capacitor, I took two pieces of metal and put a piece of paper between them, and I have a, a, just a, a dowel that I can move back and forth to tilt one up in relationship to the other. And so it varies the capacitance, okay? And so one big plate, the plate's this size, and I couldn't bring it, it's too fragile, it would fall apart. But, so you've got a coil of wire, a capacitor, a diode, that's uh, a diode in our downtime sense, is a hunk of lead ore. Galena, lead ore, lead sulfide, is pretty much the best radio crystal you can get. We've got piles of waste lead ore setting in every lead mine in the world. Galena costs nothing. You put it in a cup and you take a little piece of wire and touch it until you hear a signal. It's called a cat's whisker. It's just a pointy oh, little piece of wire. Cat's, cat's whisker. This cat's is whisker. This is what American kids were doing in the 1900s. Every single one of them was getting a crystal and making his own radio. Right up into the 60s. Yeah. So the antenna and ground goes on this side, and the earphones hook up there. That's it. Or the mic, yeah. or the speaker, or the speaker, or whatever. Um, how long does it take to build something? Well, building something like this, that fancy, you know, pretty, takes a day. Building something a little cruder that works just fine, hours. Um, in the 1920s, 20s? Yes, that's right. 1920s, the U.S. Department of Agriculture was, there were radio, AM radio stations popping up that could do market broadcasts, that could do... Farm um, reports. Huh? Farm, report. farm reports that could do home ec training and ideas about new technologies for farming and all of that. Okay, but farmers are poor and in conservative. The 20s, farmers were even poorer, right? So, so what what the USDA did was they published a one-page guide how to build a radio. Okay, and. They suggested that you purchase an earphone. You can make an earphone, trust me, it's not that hard. But it takes really fine wire. They suggested you purchase an earphone. But we came up with a better way because remember we have uptime technology available to us, right? So we have a character, Dr. Philippe Theophrastus Gribbleflots, if that isn't a name that excites you. Um, but doc, Dr. Gribbleflots, used a piezoelectric crystal that it's real easy to make, that kids make for science fairs, eighth graders. And so you take a piezoelectric crystal, you run an electric current through it, it changes its shape. Put that inside a diaphragm, and you get an earphone. And it turns out they work great with crystal radios. You can make one at home using those crystals, which you can, science fair crystals, and you can make it with aluminum foil and it works just fine. So um, anyway, so how to build a crystal it. radio and our handout for the next Minicon is going to be the Build Your Own the, the Voice of America and the Grantville League of Women Voters instructions on how to build a crystal radio. Um, which the committees of correspondence will of course pass around. <laughs> right. Uh, but in, in English but and French and Italian and, and German. German. Yes. Ooh. Right. So anyway, and but Deutsch. can you do it? Yes. Uh, you need a hollow tube. Uh, the traditional tube form, of course, is toilet paper roll. There aren't a lot of toilet they are paper a little rolls rare. downtown downtime. So what the commit what the 
League of Women Voters did was they took a toilet paper tube and they traced around it on their flyer and they said take 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 a heavy piece of paper and wrap it around itself and glue it to itself until you make a tube that's this size. Okay? So on both ends. So the first, it does, no, it doesn't, but it modifies the dielectric constant, and we're not going to go there. The, the, yes, you can wrap it around a dowel, and we're not going to talk about that, because the species of wood matters then. So see, see, you're getting that, like that, but it's more fun to have thousands of down typers making homemade toilet paper tubes. <laughs> We won't tell you why we have the tubes. Yes, but <laughs> yes we will. If you okay. want to have toilet paper, that's another problem. Okay, back, back to Steve. Back to Steve. Um, one of the things we've been fighting since the early days in the series was refrigeration. We needed refrigeration. Compressors, Freon, ammonia is super toxic. And Freon unpleasant. <laughs> You can certainly do refrigeration with propane, but you know, it's propane, okay? So, and if you want to do refrigeration with propane, it takes compressors and and perfect pistons and seals and lubricants. Stainless steel. And if you want to know why this is hard, talk to him and he'll tell you because he wrote the article. So, and he's a refrigeration guy. So, here's the correct answer for our first pass of making downtime refrigeration. Ice. There are a bunch of ways to do this. This is just one technique. And I like it because I'm the no moving parts guy, right? Okay? I mean, you figured that out, haven't you? <laughs> okay, so here's a steam ejector nozzle. See that? It blows it's into this pipe. Steam. It blows steam. High pressure steam. As this, by the way, I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you. This is the passenger car air conditioning system for the Santa Fe Railroad up super until the day they the super cheap. steam engines. That has to go through the okay. desert. This mm -hmm. is this is a is a you know went through all the way through New Mexico and into the Mojave and then went to LA, okay. right? This is I mean this is very real. All right. This and is they the used thing. it until they got rid of the steam. Right, until they got rid of the steam. Steam ejector nozzle, high pressure steam comes in here, goes through here, blows into this tube. As it blows into the tube and goes that away, it entrains air. It catches air with it and blows the air that away. Because of the pressure, because well, of the just be yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just so so we're pulling a vacuum in this box. Because okay. it's sucking the air out of it's that sucking box. sucking the air out of that box. box. Right. This is a sealed box. No sucking. Okay, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, we take salt brine <coughs> and spray it into the vacuum. The salt brine evaporates in the vacuum. The water boils. What happens as you boil liquids. They cool massively, right? Because the change of state takes pressure, heat, takes heat away. So the droplets of brine falling to the bottom are cold. And cool the and, and and cool the pool of brine that's down here at the bottom. Okay? And so I keep ejecting steam, I keep pulling a vacuum, I spray brine in, I get cold brine down here. Four degrees below, right? Four degrees Fahrenheit maximum temperature. I thought it was centigrade. Four centigrade. Set four to seven. So well below freezing. So I take my salt brine, put it into a holding tank, and pump it back around. Okay, Everything. Pump, okay. I take my steam. I can eject the steam if I want to. If I want to waste the water, or I can run the steam over a condenser. And it becomes and water. Drip into a tank and recycle that with a makeup tank when it loses some because it's going to lose some. But notice what I've got here: salt brine in a circle like this, getting me a cold tank of salt water. Very cold. Very cold. I've got a, well as cold as we want because we can modulate. <laughs> you can. Uh, I've got a steam ejector, and again, with the exception of the pumps, two pumps, no moving parts. 
Hey, Rick. Yeah. That thing will run on a slipless 5 PSI. I know. So it's so, not high, so, but it's just pressure. So, yeah, go ahead. How do you mitigate, mitigate the corrosive effects of the brine with materials that you have Maintenance. Maintenance. Well, <laughs> yeah, right. actually, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, three, and the brine is only okay. the brine is only in a small section of the whole. <laughs> okay. 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 Three answers. First, the brine is operating in an anoxic environment. Okay. Okay. Because the brine's ejecting into a vacuum, going into a tank. The tank doesn't have any air in it. Okay. The holding tank, if you make a refrigeration holding tank, it doesn't have any air in it. The pumps and pipes don't have any air in them. So if I use passivated iron in the first place, and it's an anoxic environment, the corrosive effects of the brine are mitigated. Okay. The second part of the answer to your question is what he said. Maintenance. Cheap German labor? You, well, for <laughs> expensive German labor, it doesn't matter. The point is, Grateful it's German people who are Look, cool. the Santa Fe Railroad thought it was worth doing, okay? so. Well, and they did it right up to the 40s until the day they quit having steam engines. And if you really, really, you said there were really three, get tired uh, of three, the three, three, three you mitigating can wax, you, you, you can just simply two. wax oh, I'm sorry. inside okay. of the best mitted iron okay. pipes. Right. I said, I said it and I didn't point it out as a point. Passivated iron. Right? So I'm going to expose the iron to a chloride solution before I ever start it. So I've got iron chloride iron sulfide coated coated coating and again the coating isn't going to be perfect that's why it's passivated and not active, it's, it's not active. Rick, so. just curiosity yeah compared to the systems we're more familiar with today what is the speed of BTU shedding that you can expect in this? Uh, how, how big a system do you want to make well let okay. me talk, let me talk you about can make it arbitrary well let's let can you yeah, it's, it's just just function your coil size and, and Bigger, bigger coil you put on, the bigger the other stuff has got to be to meet the coil numbers. Right. Yeah. So how big maintaining, but that, but all sure. in relation to the same degree and of air that you're processing. Yeah. Right. So you good. have to you have to increase the size of the unit, maintain the same volume of air that you're processing to get a faster heat change. Well, okay. In yeah. industry today, yeah. this system is used. Uh, ice cream. No, no. This system is currently used in big factories. In places where the temperature out change, outside changes very rapidly, yep. like like Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. the system in Oklahoma City, they have an ejector system. They turn it on. They can drop the temperature in the factory within ten minutes. Once they were at a, at a temperature they wanted, they would shut this off because it's not as efficient. And turn the air conditioner. Use energy to work, mm -hmm. and but they would turn on a, a, a package unit. Perfectly big or small. Okay, so. So, so this thing is fast. Okay. And I'm going to talk, I've, we've got two more, we've got some more topics, but I'm going to toss this over to my co-presenters. But I'm going to leave you with one last thought, okay? If you're dealing with technology, whether it's weird tech, real tech, whatever, it's dangerous. It always is. Fessenden's microphones are the least of our issues. Boilers blowing up are the least of our issues. There's a story in one of the early Granfield cassettes. Was it your story? Whose story was it with the saw blade? With what? Carrots. It was carrots, okay. Where they had a circular saw cutting logs and somebody didn't tighten the nut. They hadn't put a lockout on the power switch and the saw blade went ripping across the room and went through several. She okay. also had a These drop, things are gonna happen. She also had a drop forge in injury. Drop, drop forge injury. the drop right. forge. Yeah. So the point in drop forges, the point is, in the real world, we drive cars, we do all sorts of things that are dangerous. 